I must have been about 13, 14, because when I was a kid, I was one of them kids that everyone hated. I was good at table tennis, swimming, basketball, football, rugby, you name it, I was pretty good at it. I weren't mega at any, any level, but I was good at everything that I tried. Um, and basically I got into athletics through the school, you know, doing district sports and stuff like that, won a few medals. Um, and the reason I actually got into a club was because I, I entered the district sports in high jump and uh, in the 200. I had to leave the high jump, go and run the 200, won the 200, come back and the high jump had finished. So basically I said to them, um, stick the bar at a height above what it was won with, I'll jump it and I've won. And they were like, no, we can't do that, Macy, I'm sorry. And I was like, oh. So I went down to the club just to prove to my school that I could have won it and I would have picked up a couple of medals because our, our PE teacher, one of my old friends, or a good friend of mine now, used to give us a quid for a medal and like two quid for a silver and three quid for a gold. And uh, back in the days, I'm showing my age, aren't I? That was quite a few quid. But um, no, I, I got into athletics through that. And... Um, I was only a single eventer. I used to sort of do a bit of 100 metres, a little bit of long jump, a little bit of high jump and stuff like that. And one day I, uh, I entered the county championships, won a few medals, and the guy came up to me and said, do you fancy doing a combined event? Well, I, I just agreed because it was my first um, county vest. I didn't, in all honesty, I didn't have a clue what a uh, combined event was. And if I'd have known a 1,500 metres was at the end of it, I certainly wouldn't have bloody done it at the first place. Um, but I went and done it and I broke the English school's record first time out and then went to the finals and broke, the, uh, broke it again and won them. And... Basically, from there on in, it took me two years to get to um, world level, or world junior level, anyway. Uh, see, I would have to say the biggest achievement would be winning the Commonwealth Games last year. Um, but at the same token, uh, same token, it, was, it wasn't a great score. I'd done just enough to win it. Um, and in all honesty, if you're going to win a title, that's the easiest one to win, you know, so... <laughs> But I, I don't know, you know, all my major medals, I would say. And, and when I started athletics, someone turned around and said to me, the odds on you becoming a professional athlete and earning money out of it are sort of one in a billion. Um, so actually sitting here is a pretty good achievement as it is. Now, it's very much, it's almost like a time trial. You know, every, every single race, every single jump, every single throw is not done against someone else. Um, I mean, if they go and score a PB, then you have to kind of react to it. So there is a competition element and a, you know, a, 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 an element of, of competing against other people in it. But to be honest with you, a, a, the, the easiest way to do it is just say that look, there's only one person in the shot circle when you're in there. There's only one person in your lane. And if you compete to your very best, uh, certainly for me, then I'll win medals. Yeah, the, the unfortunate thing is when you score your personal best, you know after a certain amount of events exactly what score you're on, so you've always got that to, to sort of judge. Um, but I don't look at the scores at all until the end of the first day. Um, and then after that, you know, come the second day, every single throw, every single event is analysed with the points book and everything like that. So the, set, the first day is kind of relaxed, you just go hell for leather, you're kind of fresh and you're excited. Second day tends to be quite a grueler. Um, there's a lot of maths to do and uh, the pressure sort of builds quite quickly. I mean, maths aren't my strong point, but uh, that's why I've got a team behind me counting it all up for me so I know what time I've got to run in the 1500. <sighs> I'm going to have to say high jump, but <laughs> I'm going to make myself look like a right wallet today now, aren't I? But now high jump's consistently a very good event for me. Um, 400 metres is a great event for me as well. Hundred, it, all, all the first day events are very strong. I actually um, I held the world, um, world championship record score for the first day. Um, but actually no one's won a medal with a worse second day score than me. So whether that's good or bad, I don't know. Actually, that's terrible really, isn't it? But my second day is the one I always need to work on. So my first day events, which are 100 long jump, shot put, high jump, 400, they're all pretty strong events for me. Absolutely the opposite. I don't jump from year to year. I, I, I mean, when I jumped my personal best, which was in Edmonton, my personal best was 2.13 before. I, sco I, I jumped that three years beforehand. Didn't do a decathlon for three years, hence I didn't high jump in competition. And I probably only done two or three sessions in three years. I came out in Edmonton and jumped 2.15, and ever since I've jumped 2.15. <laughs> so all this practice, mate, I don't, I don't think it's all that good for you. you now I just work on my mental ability and come out and blast them then. Yeah, exactly. I have a, like a, I have a guy called Greg Richards. He, he specialises in all the events. He's a multi-event specialist. Um, and if I need to work on certain events, i.e. pole vault javelin, which are pretty pants for me, to be honest with you, um, then I go and see a, a, an individual coach then. But most of the time, it, you know, being a decathlete or a heptathlete is being very, very good at the basics. Um, and you can get to an enormously great level just being you know, really good at the, um, with just the fundamentals of your technique being well. And you know, once you become a single event, then you have to look at like inches and millimetres and stuff like that. But with 10 events to do, that's just way too much work. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm the Don on the PlayStation. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I love the soccer games, but I'm a bit pants at the soccer games, to be honest with you. I, I can't work more than two or three people at once. Um, but the, like the athletics games, the old track and field, the Athens, 
Oh, mate, if I was if I was as good in real life as I am on there doing the decathlon, I would be. I'd have money bulging out of my pockets every day of the week. I think part and parcel of being an athlete is that you have a lot of recovery time, uh, and it's easy to sit on the on the sofa and just vegetate and watch a DVD or something. I know there's a lot of sort of umming and ahhing about the kids they play too much in, but when you're actually resting in the athletics world, it's great to have one on and start. You know, it keeps your mind ticking over, even though your muscles are relaxing. I had a oh, Amstrad P64, whatever it was, and we used to play Asteroids or whatever it was. Um, but that was, I, I had a place, like a little PlayStation console when I was about 10. I, oh, I can't remember what it was called. Um, but you know, again, it was just like Asteroids or Spaceship games. But I, I'm pretty good, without blowing my own trumpet too much, I'm pretty good at most games, you know, car games, the lot.